Hello and welcome back to Rongmar. In today's science lesson, we're going back to the rainforest for one final visit. Our Walt for today's lesson is to use classification keys and food chains like rainforest scientists do. We've been learning a lot about the rainforest in the last few science lessons. Can you remember what we were talking about in the last science lesson? Pause the video and see if you can remember what it was we were discussing. Well, in the last lesson, we were talking about the animals and creatures that live in the rainforest. Today, we're going to be heading back to the rainforest, but this time, we're going to be meeting a human. A very busy scientist. Let's pack up our things and head deep into the Amazon rainforest one last time to meet Professor Isaac Harsh Trees, or for short, Professor I Heart Trees, but you can just call him the professor. What kind of jobs do you think a rainforest scientist would have to do? Pause the video and write down two things that you think the professor might do out here in the rainforest. Well, life out in the rainforest is busy for the scientists who work there. One job that the scientists do is to track down any animals or plants in the area and look at them, taking notes and learning from their behaviours. Another job that scientists might have to do is to discover new species of animal. There are still plenty of undiscovered insects and animals in the world, and it's the job of the rainforest scientists to find and name these new species. And one final job that the rainforest scientists might do is to watch how the animals and plants interact with each other. What happens when two monkeys meet? What do they do? What happens when a predator catches its prey? These are all jobs that the rainforest scientist has to do. Unfortunately for the scientists, the animals don't exactly stop and give an interview. So instead, they rely on technology like video recorders and cameras to record what they see. When they've collected all of their data, they bring it back to the camp and they have a good long look over everything that they have noted for the day. Professor I Heart Trees has very kindly invited me along on one of his expeditions into the rainforest. Today, he's on the lookout for some new animals in the area. He tells me this is a pretty easy one. All he has to do is go out, take a few photos of the new animals in the area, and bring them back to the camp so that we can find out which animals we actually saw. Simple, right? Well, off we go then. I think this is going to be quite fun. Three days later. Ugh, that was a lot longer than I was expecting. I didn't pack enough food for that long of a trip. Luckily, we got everything that we needed. We managed to take pictures of all three new animals for the area. Let's get back to the camp so we can identify these animals. Once they've gathered the information that they need, whether it's pictures, video recordings, or maybe just a drawing of the new animal, the scientists go back to the camp and try to identify or figure out what animal species they actually saw. Rainforest scientists can use a classification key to find out what creature they found. A fancy scientific name for this is a dichotomous key. They are much easier to use than they are to say though. All you need is a picture of the animal and the correct key. Then it's just as simple as answering yes or no to a series of questions. Let's have a look at one of the animals we found and see how we'd use the key to identify it. So, here's one of the pictures I took out on the trail. Now we know from previous lessons that this is a toucan, but let's see how we would figure that out using the key if we had no idea what animal it was. So here is our classification key. And our picture is up in the corner to remind us what it looks like. 
We start up here at the top of the key, and we work our way down through the questions answering yes or no by looking at the picture. So first of all, does it have fur? Well, no, it doesn't have fur, it's got feathers. So we're going to follow the no path. That leads us to the second question. Does it have feathers? Well, yes, it does have feathers. So that leads us down the yes path. To our third question, does it have a large beak? And the answer is most certainly yes. And that leads us to the answer of it is a toucan. See, simple. Let's see if you can figure out what species this animal is using one of the professor's classification keys. Are you ready? Okay, take a look at this classification key. Pause the video and see if you can figure out which species this is by following the key correctly. Pause the video when you're ready to try it. Well, did you get it correct? It was quite a simple one to figure out, not so many questions. So our first question, does it have fur? Yes, that leads us down here. Does it have a tail? Yes, so it's a panther. Did you get that? If you did, you're halfway there to becoming a rainforest scientist. Let's try one last one. I managed to catch a picture of this fella just as he was jumping through the trees. Can you use the professor's classification key to figure out what this animal is? Pause the video and give it a try. Well, how did you get on? First question, does it have fur? We said yes, it does, because we can see it on it. Does it have a tail? Well, yes, it does. So that brings us down to, does it have scales? No, it doesn't have scales. So it is a monkey. But of course, we already knew that. These are very simple classification keys, but they can get really much more complicated. As long as you have the right key, you can find out what any animal is, even if you've never seen it before. What's that, Professor? Oh. Well, it turns out the professor is heading out for a second expedition and he wants us to come along. So kind of him. I'm going to pack some extra supplies this time. I'm not getting stuck out there for three days with nothing to eat except for berries again. This time the professor is heading out to learn a little bit more about what the animals of the area are eating. Sure, this won't be a long trip. I mean, it couldn't possibly be, right? Two weeks later. I am not dressed for this type of activity. Professor, that's the last trip, okay? This is not what I had in mind. Let's get back to the camp so we can write up what we found out. Turns out the rainforest is quite a dangerous place. A lot of things are eating and a lot of things are being eaten as well. The professor tells me that we're going to be doing something called a food chain. Do you have any idea what that is? Pause the video and write down what you think it might be. Meantime, I'll ask the professor for a bit of extra information. According to the professor, all the animals in this area are connected to each other through something called the food chain. The food chain shows us who eats who. Usually the plants will be at the start of the food chain and a large predator will be at the end of the food chain. He also told me that these three words are important. Do you have any idea what the difference between a carnivore, an omnivore and a herbivore is? Pause the video and write down what you think. Well, a carnivore only eats meat. Sometimes they hunt for it themselves, but in the rainforest, you'll find them eating other animals. An omnivore, well, they can eat meat or plants. They're not really very fussy. Things like the tree frog, well, they eat insects, which are other living creatures. And herbivores, they only eat plants. They're kind of like the vegetarians of the rainforest. They'd never eat meat. So here's that toucan that we took a picture of on our last trip. This is how he fits in on the food chain. The arrows show which direction the energy is moving in. So the leaf is eaten by the grub, the grub is eaten by the toucan, and the poor toucan is eaten by the boa constrictor snake. Okay, time for part two of the interview to see whether you are ready to become a rainforest scientist. 
here are four pictures that we took on our last trip out. Can you put these four things in the correct order on the food chain? Pause the video and try write down the answer. Well, how did you get on? This is what your food chain should look like. Did you get everybody in the correct order? The start of the food chain is the Brazil nut tree. That's eaten by the termite, who is eaten by the anteater, and the anteater is eaten by the jaguar. Let's try another one of those. Here's four different snaps that I took out on the last trip. We have a plant, a cricket, tree frog, and an anaconda. Can you put these in the correct order on a food chain? Pause the video and give it a try. Well, how did you get on with that one? Here is what your food chain should look like. Did you get everybody in the correct place? So our plant is eaten by our cricket, our cricket is eaten by the frog, and the frog is eaten by the anaconda. Let's go for one last food chain. Here is my final four snaps that I took. Can you put these four in the correct order on a food chain? Pause the video and give it a try. Well, did you get them all correct? Here's what your food chain should look like. Our rainforest leaves are eaten by our capybara. Our capybara is eaten by the ocelot, and the poor ocelot is picked out from the sky by the eagle. There you have it. That's some of the work that rainforest scientists get up to. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit concerned about where humans come on those food chains. So, if you want the job, you can have it. I'm not hanging around here any longer. So our walls for today's lesson? To use classification keys and food chains, like rainforest scientists do. When you're ready, you can try the practice activities down below. That's all we have time for today. Until next time, take care.